Hi there learners and welcome to module 1.4 of your grade 10 curriculum. We're looking at file management. So let's see what we're going to be looking at today. We're going to look at the file and Windows Explorer, the need to organize. We're looking at more about files um, and then working with our files and folders. This is not a long um, module and a lot of it you can obviously exercise in your practical work as well. So the first thing we're looking at is the fact that computer work is saved in files, right? Now, these electronic files need to be organized just as in a manual filing system. So there's no difference when folks are having, you know, filing cabinets and archive sections and all this type of thing, and they're sorting out their paperwork. We can't just have a desktop full of files and folders. There is a need for things to be organized. And for this, we have our file explorer. Now, this is a file management program supplied with all Windows operating systems. If I use the shortcut of Windows and the letter E, um, it will open up this explorer window. And you can see from there, I have a number of things. First of all, I have my back and forward arrow so I can move back and forward between certain items. Um, I've got my address bar. I have my search box and I have my toolbar and menu bar as well. On the left, I then have my navigation page, and then last but by no means least, I have my details pane. So this is just showing you everything within your Windows Explorer, everything that is there to help you find or navigate through whatever you need to. Okay, so when we talk about navigating through folders, um, the common metaphor used when talking about how files are organized is a filing cabinet. Now, the filing cabinet metaphor is used and is useful because it demonstrates that there are, or well, there is a top level drawer. This would be the folder, and the folder contains or holds files, right? The important thing to remember is that to get to a document in a folder, you need to navigate through the filing cabinet by opening the drawer. So your hard drive on your computer is usually your C drive. If we go back to this, you can see over here the local disk C. You can also see over here the person went to this PC and then projects and then this is everything that is inside of projects which is what they're talking about in terms of navigating through the folders we also have a structure to these folders and and when when it comes to organizing you you want to be able to create a hierarchical structure of folders for example if you have um, you've got all your different uh, subject content from whatever grade you are in you might say okay well this is my grade 10 folder then inside my grade 10 folder, I've got files and folders stored in this folder for, let's say, English. Then this is for CAT. This might be for life science. This might be for history. Um, inside of English, I've got maybe set work. I've got poems, you know, etc. So this is you creating a, a hierarchical structure to your folders. The whole idea is so that you can navigate easily through all of this. Okay. Now, there is, like I'm saying to you again, a need to organize. And so you need to plan your basic folder structure um, on paper, or you can even use smart art in Word. And here's an example of that, where your main folders are school and personal, right? Because we are now in the My Files, and you've said, okay, well, in My Files, I've got my school stuff, I've got my personal stuff. Inside of school, we've got subfolders. And this is how we then go through with refining each level, giving them, and this is something we spoke about in one of the earlier modules, meaningful folder and file names so that you know exactly that's cat, which means all cat related files are going to be inside of this folder. I'm not going to find music inside cat or find my cat stuff inside music. No, I need to make sure that I've got meaningful folder and file names and you want to keep the same folder structure, if you can, on all computers you use. Why? So it's easier to find the things that you've created. Right. Now, when it comes to naming your files, we say we want to use meaningful names. That's fine. But we need to remember a few rules. 
Have a look at this. A file name may contain any alphanumeric character, including the letters A to Z and the numbers 0 to 9. No two documents in the same folder can have the same name. Why? Because it's going to create a conflict. It's going to tell you that you've already got a file or folder by that name. Okay? Each folder must have a different name. Well, that's what we just said. So you can use alphanumeric characters. You could use descriptive names. You can use underscores instead of spaces. Use short names. In other words, less than 30 characters. And be consistent. However, they do tell us here at the bottom that as we develop in our own file naming system, we need to avoid using the special characters. In other words, if you put these things into a file name, it will not accept it. Okay, so this is why, for example, we use an underscore instead of a space because it won't accept that. Right. Um, more about our files. Let's have a look. Each program stores the files it creates in its own way. Each file type is given a unique icon. So here we can see our JPEGs, our PowerPoint, Excel, Word. This is just your plain text. So each one is given a unique icon. When we look at our files, and if you right click on any of these files, let's take invoice for example. If I was to right click on this and go into properties, this is what I would see. And there you can see this is the name of the file. That is the extension which tells me the program that's needed to open this file. But I'm looking at the properties of this. So here I can see things like the attributes. These attributes allow you to protect your file. So I can make this a read-only file, which means when the person opens it, they can only read it. They can't do anything else to it. I can hide it as well. I can, you see I've got different tabs on, uh, on top here, general security details, tells me more about the precise info of the file. Guys, usually you are going to be using this when you want to change things like the author of the file, etc. I can see the previous versions. Um, I can change which program opens this particular file. So at the moment it's Adobe Acrobat. If anything changes, I can click on change and change that. Um, I've got info regarding the location. So this is the what we call the path of where the file is stored. Yeah, I can see here it's on the C drive, in the program files folder, in the free mind folder, in the doc folder. I can see the size of this as well, of this particular file. And I can see the date and time on which it was created, modified, and accessed. Okay. A lot of information there. Now, this one is important. A file name consists of three parts. We have our name. This is the name given by you, the user. And again, we know it can consist of alphanumeric characters, A to Z, 0 to 9. Um, it can contain spaces, but we tend to want to rather use underscores than spaces. Okay? And then we have our dot, which separates the name from the extension. Now, the extension will tell you which, well, it's really telling Windows, which program Windows needs to use to open the file over here, right? Whatever this name is. This is automatically added by the program when you save the file. So when I go into Word, type out a document, and I save it as birthday list, this extension will be attributed to it automatically. The file extension, remember this, tells us what type of file it is and which program should be used to open it. Please never change the file extension of an existing file manually. That is, go in here and um, let's go into the over here and then going to type in, okay, let us change this to .docx. Don't do that because chances are it is not going to work. This is what happens. Windows can't open this file. Why? Because the extension isn't right. So you can see they always use this app to open .xyz files, right? Um, it doesn't recognize that. So to open this file, you can see a suggested list of programs. You can search the internet for a program. You can change or set the default program. Now, this is where you want to do this to make sure that Windows knows exactly which program is needed to open that particular file. You can also right-click on the file and use the Open With 
command. That is only when you are having trouble opening a particular file and you get this sort of error. Now, I spoke earlier about file paths. Now, when we talk about file paths, we're talking about the, sp the, the specific path that is needed to get to that particular file. In this case, have a look at this. I've got D drive documents invoices 2017. What does that file path look like? It looks like that. I start on the D drive and on the D drive, I'm looking for the documents folder. Inside of the documents folder, I'm looking for the invoices folder. When I've opened that, I'm looking for the 2017 folder and that will give me access to whichever file I am looking for. Now, with this and with the extensions that we've mentioned, there are common file types and common extensions that we have. So you don't need to know like all of this off by heart, um, but you do need to understand at least uh, a few of them. The main ones are usually your plain text and rich text, your compressed um, file types, your PDF, your video, audio and graphics. The office ones, you'll get to know them as you do the work. Um, but just know a few of these, like the most popular here are JPEG, JPG, uh, Bitmap, and then your MP3, Wave, MP4. Yeah, those are usually the most common ones. Here again is another picture, another table dealing with our file types and file extensions. And there you can see they've even included the package name. So we're dealing with images, the type is graphics, and these are the type of extensions. Videos, movies, there we go. Audio, sound, you know, notepad, web files, all of this. So um, it's just giving you more examples of that. Here's even more. Okay, here are examples of actual files and you can see the icons differ. We can see the extension. So I know that that's a picture. I know that that's a video because it's showing me the icon as well. Um, yeah, Excel, Word, all of that. Okay, so please be able to identify file types and extensions. Um, it is important. Now, the main operations on files and folders are things like copying or moving. Please, when I copy, I'm creating a duplicate of the file or folder to put it somewhere else. When I move, I'm basically cutting, right? So I'm moving it from its current location somewhere else. I can delete, I can rename, and I can sort my files as well. So those are just some of the main operations of files and folders. Now, when working with files, I can also use what's known as the recycle bin. So if you haven't worked with the recycle bin before, this is what it does. Um, when files are deleted from the hard drive, they're automatically sent to the recycle bin. This is basically the trash can of the PC. You delete something, it goes there. Now you can recover those files if, it, if you have not emptied the recycle bin, but just watch out for that. Okay, if you've yeah, empty the recycle bin, then you are going to have a bit of a problem. Just also remember that files deleted from a network drive or from a flash drive are not sent to the recycle bin because there's no recycle bin on them, so it just gets completely deleted. Okay, so please bear that in mind. There are ways to recover that data, but it's just a lot more difficult. You can also create a shortcut to any file. Now, this is something that does get asked. It was asked in the grade 12 exams as well. Um, and you need to just be able to identify uh, what a shortcut looks like. A shortcut will always have this little arrow on it. And this shows that when you double click on this file, it is actually pointing to where the original program is. So it's a shortcut to get to that particular file, folder or program. And our shortcut keys, these are things that we use to be able to work smarter. Um, these are our common ones, cut, copy, paste, select all. Um, there are a number of others as well. It's beneficial for you to get used to these um, so that you can indeed work a lot smarter. We can also convert between file types. So I can save the file in a format that can be read by other types of programs. Um, here in Word, I've got my save as type. 
So I've got my file name in place, but maybe I want to save it as a document type that can work with older versions of Microsoft Word. And I can use this one, Word 97-2003, which it doesn't change the content, but I'm saving the type of file as one that can work with an older version of Word. Okay. Then we have, like I mentioned, with the extensions, we've got compressed folders. This makes the size of the folder smaller. Okay. It's essentially what we call zipping or compressing. It doesn't change the content inside, but it is useful for sending files by email since you only have to attach one file and it makes it smaller, so it takes up less space. Once the person gets these um, compressed folders, they can double click on it and it can unzip or uncompress and then go back to its original size. Okay, so that's what is meant by compressing files and folders. Um, file attributes we have already looked at. It's just the properties of a file um, and uh, really are, they are the attributes associated with a specific file, like making it read only, making it hidden, etc. And guys, that's it. That's all that's really required of uh, you for this module. Looking at the file structure, file names, file paths. I would say the most important parts out of this module is really the file path, the file name, the properties and the extensions, um, types and extensions. Those are the main things that, that really come out here. But that is it for our module.